Really excited to be joined by Heather here today. Uh, we started, uh, I guess we started our connection back when I was in college, so probably like three, four years ago. I met yeah. your mom before you, actually. Yeah. So. Uh, just kind of give a background about yourself. Like Heather, she's in real estate. She's in the Westfield area. They're, they're based out of Westfield. And just kind of give a background about real estate and how you're upbringing, what, how you got interested in real estate, all that fun stuff. Yep, absolutely. So, well, thanks for having me. This oh, my is a beyond the behind the scenes is impressive to watch. So I have no doubts that you're going to kill it one of these days. So um, I think I've had every job known to man, to be honest with you. So I grew up in the real estate industry, which is a little bit different than people getting their license. So as you probably can attest. Exactly. So I think one of the things I've sort of seen the behind the real estate um, operations for a very long time. Um, so I swore on my life I would never get into real estate because my mom back in the day used to have a phone that was separate into the house. It would ring all hours of the night, early morning. So I was like, I'll never do that. So I was a math teacher for a while. I worked for an advertising agency. Um, I worked to start up a new bank. I worked in the hotel industry. I had a summer internship with my mom and uh, there you have it. <laughs> so like what, what clicked for like, okay, now I want to get into real estate. I think it's, um, I don't know if you've experienced this, but it's sort of like you get the bug. So I was just really helping do the paperwork. And then she was like, you know what, Heather, you're here all the time anyway. Why don't you just get your license and then you can help me do other things. So I think she may have had an ulterior motive, but so. Um, <laughs> um, so as I got started with like helping show houses and really getting entrenched in it, um, I thought I was pretty good at it and I was good with people. Um, so then I just kind of was doing it part time. I realized it was really hard to do part time. So I jumped in and now we're just taking over the company. <laughs> and you're a realtor and managing partner, right? Correct. Okay. Yes. So like, what does that position entail, the managing partner? A lot. So, um, so I can sell real estate. So I have a client base that my mom and I exclusively work with. Um, my mom is the broker owner. So she's been doing this for as long as I've been alive, almost 50 years. Um, so, and then in terms of the managing partner, that is operations, finance, a lot of the marketing, executing the marketing plan, social media, human resources, staying on top of um, current trends. So all that kind so of stuff. Just basically Events. everything. Yeah. You're just like a, like a Swiss army knife. <laughs> yeah. Swiss army knife. There you go. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know who Heather is, it's, uh, they're, Company's called the Wattalitz. Wattalitz and Associates. And Associates Realist. Westfield, and you've been in Westfield the entire time. Or entire did time. You move? Yep. Nope. So I um, graduated from UMass Amherst, moved out to Boston, did sort of the postgraduate thing. My mom uh, raised us here in Westfield. I moved back, so I've been doing Westfield real estate for my entire career. So my mom's been doing it for five decades, and we've all been in Westfield. So the company. What, what, what's so special about Westfield too? Why do you like love this area so much? I love it. Okay. So I have a good answer for that. Um, Westfield is a large enough city where there's about 40,000 people. And one of the things that I love about Westfield is it has a feeling of a community. Like when chips are down, you have people around here that will literally like help pull you up or they have your back. On the other side, I think it's large enough for you to grow. And I also think one of the things that makes Westfield unique is its grit, its determination, and it's somewhat competitive of an environment, but in the best way possible. So I think those things definitely have made my brother and sister and I and my friends um, a little bit different, like a little grittier maybe is the word. So, yeah. Well, I went to school in Westfield, for those of you who don't know, and I I attest to what she's saying. I was only here for four years and this this town just felt different. I have such a love for it just because of the people. Mm -hmm. like I met your mama at a networking event yep. back in, I think, my sophomore year. And she's like one of the nicest ladies yep. I've ever met. Yeah. And then I think that started our, our bond from there. And and it's like, you know, I, if I, I'm trying to help them out, I'm doing this podcast mm -hmm. and I think it's good for both of us. Yep. Getting the word out about your business yep. uh, to the local community, yep. uh, to the community that you love. Yeah. And that you're going to you know stick around here and try to build this business even bigger in it's, this area. So. It's amazing because I think about Westfield too, it has like old core values of like, you know, honesty and trust and hard work. 
but it also has like room to grow. For example, you have Whip City Fiber, there's Westfield State University, we have a hospital, we have an Air Force base, we have a vocational school that's phenomenal, we have awesome education. So it has so many amazing things. And from a business perspective, I think one of the things that is awesome is our vendor partners that we have. Not just, we have amazing realtors, which we can talk about, but we also have other small business owners that are working really hard and they're extending a hand to, to kind of like work together as a team. And I think that kind of makes it a little bit unique. And the other thing about Westfield or the area, I should say, is that it's like this little this city right here in Westfield. Mm-hmm. And then once you go out of it, you go to Southwick. And Correct. Stuff. It's a beautiful area, beautiful farmland, just tons of land. And I think this is just so diverse in this area in terms of just like farmland and city life, and, mm-hmm. which that, that I drew that drew me to the, uh, to this area, and mm-hmm. I'm trying to convince my brother and his wife to move to Southwick <laughs> I know because I realtor. love Southwick. <laughs> the ranch, especially the golf course, is just yep. gorgeous. So. Well, think about it. You're like what 45 minutes from the Berkshires, so you can go up to Lenox and do that. You are um, 35 minutes to Connecticut, so you can go down to West Hartford or Hartford, Connecticut, and have a whole different experience. You can be 90 minutes to Boston like that. And you've got like UMass is what, 30 minutes yeah. away in Greenfield, which is a booming town too. So uh, what about how far is New York City? That's not so, too loud. Yeah, no, I think what, well, depends on how you get there. You can take the um, train from Springfield and I think it's what, four four hours maybe into yeah, the sounds- into like Penn Station. Or you can drive an hour and a half, New Haven, take the train and... Yeah. It's so more of the story is like yeah. this next to everything, basically. Yeah. This yeah. is like the center of Boston, between Boston and New York. So there's just like, you can't go wrong. Yeah. And if you want, awesome. if you want to move into an area that has, you know, plenty of privacy and I gotta say, there's some great golf courses out here. I'm a big golfer. Yep. So great golf courses, yep. a lot of like, um, we gotta get you to homes. play Crestview. Yeah. Crestview. Where is yeah. That? That's an ag alum. It's, really it's a beautiful course. Yeah. There was a, what's the other one on the the Long Meadow? We got the Ranch, Southwick. Twin Hills. Twin Hills. Um, there's one in Long Meadow. I think it's like Dark Horse or something. Oh, Great Horse is in Horse. Hampton. Yes. Okay. That's, I've never golfed there. I heard but it's beautiful. I've heard, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was like a one of like a professional course or yeah. along those it's lines. It's like a so. yeah, it's really nice. She was like a 150. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, no, so, <laughs> like I heard the locker rooms over there are like insane. Oh, so yeah, man. so I, I've been curious about this. I'm curious about this with okay. everybody. I had did a podcast last week with another business owner in my area, and I got asked the question: What motivates you every single day? Mm-hmm. What, what gets you up in the morning? Good question. I think. Um, I saw that as one of your questions and I had to, I was like, that's a very intuitive question. Um, I don't know how to eloquently say it, but I'm not done yet. Meaning like, I know the best is yet to come. I am a huge Patriots fan. So I have to tell you that they inspire me. And I think I know that we have so many awesome pieces and I'm determined to like putting all of those things together to keep driving the train and to see what's possible. So I know what motivates me is that the best is yet to come. Like I know in my heart and in my gut and with some elbow grease that like we could seriously do some amazing things. And that's what gets me out of bed every day. So that's what at least drives me and keeps me moving forward. Some days are more difficult than others, but that's sort of what the the driving force is, is to like, okay, let's go all in and let's really see what you can do. And I really uh, attest to the point, like some days are difficult, more difficult than others. And it's just like when you're having that morning, you get up, it's like, I don't want to go to the gym. I don't want to go to work today. I think it's just like, you got you got to dig deep and realize like, okay, this is what I'm striving for. Correct. And like in your case, you want, you have more to prove, a lot more to Correct. prove. So that's what's driving you. And I think you got to keep reminding yourself on those days that yep. you're just not feeling it. It's like, you just said it, dig deep. And I think like, of course, it's human nature. You're never going to have, like, you're never going to be happy all the time or whatever. But I think what separates the average from, like, the exceptional is, like, yeah, you dig deep and you got it out. And, you know, maybe today wasn't a great day, but we'll get it tomorrow or the next week. So I think that's one of the things that makes me unique is the drive. And I think it's what makes our company unique. And, um, listen, you can't do real estate without being hardworking. Like, I don't care who you work for. It's a very difficult business. And um, I have the most respect for realtors, um, different markets, different clientele. 
And I think that the ones that do this all the time and even just the courage to get started in this industry, um, I like tip my hat, you know, my competitors are not like, this is a tough business and to be successful at it is just takes a lot of hard work. So it's cutthroat. So like, for example, my dad and I, we were in contact with this um, home, homeowner was trying to sell, we're mm-hmm. trying to like buy our house and mm-hmm. eventually flip it. And then we had a meeting with her on the day. It was like that morning. And then we got a call from like a wholesale or something say, Hey, we're canceling mm-hmm. that meeting. And we didn't hear from her. He, he just knocked on her door. Yep. And he's like, I'm, I want to buy your house. And yep. she's like, cancel this meeting with, with these two. Um, this one of the things, and I was looking at the questions that there's not a lot. I, one of the things that surprises me or that I'm starting to learn more about is human behavior. And so just when you think like, okay, I'm, I've done this enough to know like, okay, first time home buyers, I can sort of anticipate their needs or an investor or how to um, provide information on, you know, mortgages and lending and whatnot. The human behavior definitely throws you every once in a while where you go, oh my God, I didn't even, I didn't see that, you know, or yeah, it's interesting. That's something I'm super passionate about. I want to learn more about the human psychology of things because I think that's, especially for real estate, that's like very important and you got to be empathetic towards the consumer, your client. And I think that's where a lot of people go wrong in real estate. They just think about the money, 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 money. And it's they don't not think about the feelings of the client. Of course, and that's when. So wait, before you, um, two good books that you need is um, Chris Voss. I think that's the one. Yep, yeah, that's outstanding. Um, uh, never split the difference. And then I believe Daniel Pink. Have you seen the master class with Daniel Pink? He talks no. about sales. Outstanding. So in terms of like how humans act or how to learn, um, it, it's pretty tools in your tool belt, I guess. So, and, yeah. and another great uh, salesperson, Zig Ziglar. Yes. He was, he's excellent. I was listening to one of his audiobooks recently and that's how I actually closed the deal. I yeah. listened to it like the day before yeah. and I picked up one little thing about yeah. closing yeah. and I used that the next day and I closed, yeah. closed that yeah. person. So I think one of the things that makes realtors really good is empathy. Like, yeah. Um, like you said, it's not just about, it's not about the dollar. Like you wouldn't be successful if it was only about making money. I mean, certainly that's important, but do your job first, right? A lot of people have never bought and sold a home before, or they don't do it every year. We're, we're doing this all the time. So you have to be really sensitive that you may not know what the closing process is because you didn't do it all but 20 years ago, or you know, a lot of adult children have never done this and their parents are trying to give them advice that they did 30 years ago and things are a little different. So you kind of have to just be empathetic and understand and I'm working on being a better listener, but that's, you know, one one of my goals for the new year. (laughs) Be a better listener. Yeah. Write that down. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things about real estate is that it's constantly changing, changing super fast with all the new technology and all that stuff. But Ten, doesn't, I don't care if it's 10 years from now, 20 years from now, it's always going to be about empathy. And 100%. Always, it's always a human connection between a customer and the, the realtor or 100%. The investor, whatever the case is. You gotta be empathetic. My mom's been doing this for 50 years, no joke. And I was just uh, showing a house the other day and there was another realtor there and they were like, your mom is a legacy, you know? And I was like, yeah, I'm, yeah I know. And one of the things, or I mean, I've learned so many things, but she's like, you know what? Technology is constantly going to be changing, but the things that don't change is like your relationship with your customers. And she has helped, you know, this person whose children have bought houses, who's now grandkids. So, I mean, it's like generations of loyal customers and clients. And that's because she's a good person. She does her job really well. The technology is awesome. And that's how I certainly help. But at the end of the day, like, People want to work with someone they trust, you know, so. Good people will always want out. 100%. And one of the big 100%. things. 100%. We love, me and you both love Gary Vee. Yeah. And he always preaches kindness. Yep. And at the end of the day, kindness will always went out. I mean, some people, it might not go your way, not like 10% of the time, but if you're kind 100%. to every single person, it's going to come back around. Yeah. Like karma kind of, I've seen it. I've seen it in this business and. Um, and at the end of the day, like I go to bed and I, I sleep good, you know, like I work really hard and I know I'm doing the right thing and I've been taught really well by the best of the best. So I'm really lucky And our agents have like been doing this a long time. So like we have agents that have done this for four decades, three decades, 20, you know, 20 years. And I think 
you can have your license for 20, 30, 40 years. It's another thing to actively help buyers and sellers for 40 years and help navigate problems and help get people into the end zone. And there's a difference. You know what I mean? So experience of a failed septic or what to do at the 11th hour, like we know how to navigate those things because we've been through it, you know? So I digress. Where do you see this business in five years, 10 years? Like where do you want this thing to go? Yep. So I've thought a lot about this. So... I think the core business of real estate will never, real estate sales will will be the core of our company. I think what, what I'd like to do is recruit new agents and w- whether that be a cross reference of agents that have one or two years of experience with newer agents that are just getting their license, pairing the newer agents up with the experienced agents is always a good marriage because they're learning old school values and the right way to do things. Um, so that I'd like to grow, but I also want to keep it. So I'm not, um, I'm not looking to have a hundred agents. I want to keep it somewhat intimate and, and do a really good job. And then I think that there's in that core business sub sets of revenue streams and whether that's, um, partnering with other small businesses or providing other services, design, you know, uh, storage, whatever those may be, I think that there's opportunity for growth there. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. So you want to keep this like a, as basically like a family business. Correct. Like you're probably close with all your agents. You Correct. Just probably go get beers. And Independent. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then just kind of take that core business, grow it, but also have different segments that are offsets of the, the core business. So, um, you know, we do a lot of events. There might be an event planning, I don't know, section of it. So I think all of those uh, revenue streams have to complement helping people buy and sell real estate. Because at the end of the day, that's what we do. And it's what we've done for five decades. And it's what we do really well. So yeah, I think uh, you're, you're on a successful path. I mean, you've been in business for almost five decades. I like know. your mom, especially. I know. I reason. feel like I've been at open houses when I was like five years old. And I'm not even kidding you. Like, like, yeah. I'm never doing this. Yeah. Life, no, but... I literally was like, forget that. I went to I went to UMass for my hotel HRTA, like hotel restaurant. Yeah. I was like, mom, I'm never doing it. Mm, what do you know? There you go. <laughs> almost two decades later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I'm very curious and interested to hear what your answer is for what's something about the real estate industry that you used to believe, but don't anymore. Um, I think I have a different perspective because I have seen the business for so long. So I'm not coming at it from watching HGTV and then just getting my license and going, oh my God, I had no idea that it was this difficult. So I think I've uh, my I don't know if anything surprises me other than the fact like I've seen all of that. I have consciously knowing all of those problems that happen, chose to get into this industry. I think one of the things that surprises me or I'm still learning is your ability to solve problems. Like at the end of the day, I come in and okay, what problem are we going to solve today? So there's always going to be a challenge. It's like we're problem solvers. It's not just showing pretty houses and picking out paint colors, you know? Yeah, HG uh, TV makes it look so easy. They do. It's like, oh, we got like one problem when they were fixing up this house. That's it. Or like you, you're, sun, you're in Manhattan roses. at like some wine cellar. Oh, you know, I just signed like a $40 million, you know, house over a glass of wine. Uh, really, no issues it with that. It yeah. doesn't work like that. No. Yeah. They make it look too easy. Yeah, don't don't no. believe what they're showing. It's no. good entertainment, but... It is. And there's great ideas on your home, but like who's talking about appraisals or inspections or closing documents or lenders and the good lenders and working with an attorney and, you know, referrals to another state. So there's a lot of moving pieces. And um, I think, yeah, they don't talk about that at all. <laughs> I, I used to watch um, ugh, Flipping Vegas with the, that guy, mm-hmm. Scott. He's he's very obnoxious, mm-hmm. and there's all there was the thing with his show. There's always like a huge problem that's actually not a problem. And another thing, another pet peeve with those shows before we move on is that they all make it seem like they're going to lose money on the on the property, mm-hmm. and they end up making like hundred grand. Well, I think too, if you look at the valuations, right? They go, okay, I bought the house for ease of numbers for a hundred thousand. I put in a hundred and fifty thousand. So now the home is worth 265000 because they did the acquisition plus the improvement and they sprinkled in a little extra. 
But if you pan out, so now did you over improve this house in a neighborhood that maybe, you know, you really have to think about like these people that are fixing and flipping on these shows and find out like, is that really the fair market value that someone paid for it or not? And it, it very well could be. But I think when you like crunch the numbers, like and talk to a local realtor that knows that market, it may be two different things. It's great for TV, but yeah, because my dad, my dad's an appraiser, and he always talks about how he walks in the homes that have like granite countertops, beautiful kitchens, and it just doesn't fit the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And they're always wondering why isn't our home valuing at like fifty? Or it's just more? the home value. Yeah. So we're in a market right now where you know the barrier to entry is a little bit higher, and you know sellers are getting sort of let's call it um, at the height of their of the the bell curve. Now, once it shifts, because it always shifts, right, it'll be more of a buyer's market. But I think you, the market conditions, a global pandemic, lack of inventory, um, low interest rates, which are making buyers want to and affordably be able to buy instead of rent because rental incomes are so high right now um, or higher than they have been in the past. So there's a lot of factors that go into it that I think the I love it. I love you, HGTV. But I think that are, they're not talking about that. I mean, it's, it's you know, just it's just that's not part of the show. Yeah, so exactly. but just to be mindful of like, there's a lot more that goes on to buying and selling real estate. You know, what separates you guys from your competition? Because you got like Rovithis down the yep. street and he's got a lot of like offices and yep. stuff. So. so first things first. So we're um, you have franchises that have, you know, large amounts of realtors in their office, which we're obviously not. You have independents, which may have anywhere from 50 to 100 like them. Um, I would say we're a small owned women owned business that has about 10 agents. Um, What separates us is two things. Um, In my opinion, it's the depth of relationships that we have with our database. So we're very much into working by referral and servicing the client customer service. So other people probably work very similarly, but our database is really deep. And my mom's been doing this for five decades. So we have a tremendous um, amount of support. Um, but we also complement that with our community outreach, which I think makes us very unique and very different. So it's not just one realtor out of 500 that's doing a bake sale. It's having Scarecrow Central and really getting our hands dirty and going all in or being on the board of directors for Stanley Park and putting on a fundraiser this June or working with Boys and Girls Club to do an event. So we don't just kind of send our check in for the sponsorship and here's our logo. Like we really get entrenched in our community because we love it Um, and it has paid us dividends, but we also are pretty passionate about it. So I think that's one, two of the core things that makes us a little bit more different. But I will tell you, There are some phenomenal realtors. um, And like I said before, this is a tough business. So if you're in this for the long haul, like we all work together and you have to think about it. If I'm buying um, with my, I'm a buyer's agent and someone's a list agent, you have to work together as a team. And so we have a really good reputation on being fair, doing the right thing. And in response, like it makes that team effort, even with other companies, helpful. For a smooth transaction, so the thing that stands about stands out about you guys is just how much you guys care. We talked about empathy earlier in the episode. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what the community sees in you guys. You guys host all these events, the Scarecrow Central. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the the you do stuff with the Boys and Girls Club? The yeah, that yep, the Boys, that, and, Boys, and, Boys and Girls Club, Stanley Club. You Park. Do stuff with like a lot of the, the school, everything. Mm-hmm. And people notice that. Yep, and that adds up over time. It builds boosts your reputation. Yep. over and over again. And don't you guys like do handwritten notes and stuff like yes. that? Yes. So we're big advocates. I think I was telling you about um, Brian Buffini is a world renowned uh, real estate trainer and guru. Um, so my mom, I remember her going to these sessions like years ago. And he's really big on um, notes, calls, and pop buys. And you're like, what? Pop buy? Um, so writing handwritten notes, which I love to do, and I've always loved to do that. I even have a handwritten note from Josh McDaniels of the New England wow. Patriots. And then making your phone calls and being consistent about it. So just as you were being you know, consistent about your podcast, we have to be consistent about our outreach. And that's picking up the phone and not just texting or emailing. Um, 
And then also stopping by with a little item of value or putting something in the mail that talks about how much your home is worth or staying top of mind is really important in this business because it is so competitive that all it takes is, oh, my niece got her real estate license. And um, so there are a lot of realtors in the community. Um, so we just try to make sure that we're staying top of mind with the relationships that we have every step of the way. So. And that's paid dividends over the years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my mom is still has the same database of 100 people that she started with many years ago. That's how we train our new agents. And I think everybody wants the sexy quick fix of a Facebook ad and a social media plan, which is important. But I look at those as assets and added um, ways of strategy, not the core. The core is who do you know? Who, you know, think about it. I work with you because I like you, I trust you, and most importantly, I know you can get the job done. And that's why people work with us. They like us, we're kind of fun. We, you know, they they know we're gonna work hard and we get the job done. At the end of the day, come hell or high water, we're gonna get this into the end zone. So a lot still, of football analogies. Yeah, still yeah. Belichick says, do your job. Do your job, that's exactly it. And I'll tell you, I'm crazy about New England Patriots football. I watch it every Sunday and I'm inspired. Like it's hard work, it's a grind. Like there's a strategy to it. He's all about the details. It's kind of pretty similar in running a business, you know? I don't know if you could yeah. buy and sell real estate, but yeah, probably could actually. Yeah, yeah. Who's yeah. gonna refuse? Yeah, that. exactly. Exactly. I think you can learn a lot from Bill Belichick. He's been in coaching for like 47, 48 years. And yep. how does he keep players that are adults motivated every single day? How does he get them to gel as a team? That type of thing. Yeah. It's so impressive. And so you asked me earlier, like what drives you? Like that helps drive. Like, think about it. He's done generations he's done it before facebook was around and social media being a challenge with his players right same thing with real estate so i'm fortunate that i can work with my mom who knows sort of the old school way of doing things and that's never going to change and i'm helping introduce new marketing strategies with technology but at the end of the day like people like are going to work with people like that they like you know and that they trust so on the NFL side, I mean, think about the egos he has to deal with and the money, wow. you know, so. Just like when Randy Moss came, he had a massive ego and it worked out. It worked out and I didn't know if OBJ was going to come. I was but hoping. I, yeah, I know. I know. I was like, oh, we could use I him. I kept but checking Twitter. I know. Like, I, I'm like, he he went, what, Rams? Yeah, Rams. Yeah. So just so you know, Bill Belichick is the one person I want to have dinner with, like, before I die. <laughs> like, oh, he's, man. like, it, instead of, him. like, Jesus, like, it would well, be Bill you, Belichick. Now you got the end with Josh yeah. McDaniels. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. You so, butts. yeah, there you go. I actually read Belichick's book. I don't know if you read that. I haven't read it yet. Um. No, it's called Belichick. He didn't write it, but okay. it's by Ian O'Connor. And it kind of talked about how just his preparation for just practicing games is just next level. Yeah. And that's like, that's stuck with me from that book. Like how he's out prepared everybody. That is exactly like I have chills just thinking about it. I think that is his quan or what makes him so successful. And I also think if you listen to him, he's a student of the game. Like he knows the history from Canton, Ohio, like everything. I mean, his father was an NFL player for a short amount of time and he's been around it for a long time. He's a coach as well. Yeah. So I think, um, yeah, he's all in, you know, so it'll be interesting to see what the next generation of Belichick's will do, you know. I know. And his son. Yeah, his no. daughter's very successful lacrosse, women's mm -hmm. cross coach too. So. Yeah. I would hope so. They, I get to learn from the best. Yeah, exactly. Same here. <laughs> yeah. So I'm curious about like, so I'm always, you know, I'm interested in reading. I love learning new mm -hmm. things. So what is your favorite book of all time? Or if you can't think of that, what is yep. your top, your top favorite book yep. of all time? Actually, I have a couple. So uh, the Chris Voss Never Split the Difference is one of the most um, utilitarian uh, I read it and I felt like I got skills from reading that book. So that would be one. Um, one of my favorite books and most arduous to read was Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand. So that was pretty. I never heard of that. Yeah, it's pretty deep um, about objectivism and the the when it was written in the era and and when and for a female to write that was pretty phenomenal. Um, I'm reading right now a book called um, It's About Your Brain and it's from Dr. Joe Dispenza and it's talking about how to program your brain and how you 
um, right when we wake up in the morning, we base it off of remembering the past. And what he's talking about is remembering your future and how to train your brain to because your brain doesn't know the difference between reality and not. And so if you can kind of visualize like what you want, your subconscious mind will kind of start to work on those things. So that's sort of my goal for this year is to kind of maximize like the powerful tool that we have. So kind of sounds a little that immediately just, um, you know, triggered something like I meditate every day. And Mm -hmm. one of my meditations is it's like to picture your goals. You just sit there in a quiet area for 10 minutes, focus on your breath, focus on the present moment. And you just picture like, where you're you going to be in 10 years. Like exactly. where, where you're standing, like exactly. standing on the, on your beach house, like what's going on mm-hmm. like that. And that's the meditation I do a lot of the time. And that helps me to just kind of just calm down and just be okay. This is what we're striving for. Yep. This is what we got to work towards. Today. Yep. And that's exactly what he's talking about. And he also talks about the biology about it and how your body is made up of energy and the, the quantum physics behind it. And like he's done brain scans. Like, so if you keep envisioning on where you want to go and your goals, it will happen. And the power of like being in the present moment, which I have not figured out how to do yet, but hopefully, and the power of um, a lot of creativity happening, happening when you're not trying to chase something. And when you're not trying to remember the past, this is like being in the moment. So I don't know how to do that yet, but I, it's a fascinating book. And so I think he has one book called Evolve Your Brain, and this one is talks more about your personality. Um, but Joe Dispenza is the Joe author. Dispenza. Yeah. And I think that's going to do it. Yeah. So do you have uh, – where, where can people find you? Like Facebook, yep. website? So people can find us on Facebook at Wattalitz Associates. They can log on to our website at Wattalitz.com, or they can call our office at 413-568-0005. I'll put the phone number on the screen and I'll put the links in the description on YouTube and stuff. So you can find their links there. Very easy access. So thank you so much, Heather. This was actually, this was fantastic. I think we learned a lot. And yeah. I would love to do another episode one day. I Absolutely. have a lot, more, a lot more questions to ask. And-, and I have to tell you, you are a phenomenal young man. And I'm just so honored to know you. And I know that like in 10 years from now, just remember us, you know, remember us little people oh, in the world. So yeah, you're going to, you're going to crush it. So thank, thank you. Thank you so much.